welcome into the Brooks Bench with your host Brooke, aka Shiggy, and my co-host Brooke. What's up, y'all? Hey, Megan. What's up? All right, guys, we have a lot to talk about. So much has gone on, but if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share, join our Discord, follow us on all social media. But let's get into some controversy. First uh-huh. up, the All Star selection or the All Star team was picked. I have some opinions. I have some snubs. You guys see the list below on our lovely notes here. Um, while you guys look at it, I'll go over the leading fan votes. So, Caitlin Clark got 700,735 votes at number one. Aaliyah Boston, 618,680 votes. Asia Wilson, 607,300 votes. Brianna Stewart, 424,135 votes. And Angel Reese, top five, 381,518 votes. Um, not surprised. Caitlin Clark led that. Um, I did want to touch on, did you guys see the, the comparison of votes from last year? Yeah. No. Blew it um, out the water. Last year, Asia was the leading vote getter with 90, like 8,000 votes. It's not oh, insane. now that you say that, I do remember that last year. And we were, I think we were like, that's a lot of people. Like, it's yeah. right <laughs> I was like, wow, what a good turnout. I don't know if it's 98,000, but it was 90,000 something. But man, this is crazy. I'm not surprised Kaylin Clark led it. Um, yeah. But what do you guys think of the selection, the roster? Just a quick little little reaction, little summary, because I have some opinions. At first, I was like, oh, this looks good. Like, mm-hmm. like you know, your initial thoughts are like, okay, cool. Yes, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. And then honestly, like, I really am sad about Carrington. Like, I think she yes. has uh-huh. oh done gosh. such a good job this yes. year. And then when this came out, she had a hell of a game and was, like, blocking everybody. <laughs> yeah. So whoever- Carrington on their fantasy drop well done yeah. to piss her off. Yeah. So, yeah. I think she's like the biggest snub for me. Yes. I agree. What about you, Meg? Yeah, definitely. I agree. Uh, and Ezzy. Oh, yeah. And Ezzy. Yeah. Ezzy didn't make it. But I agree. You know, it's hard too because when I look at it too, though, and you, and you, and you ask yourself, okay, Ezzy's missing, Carrington's missing, who would they replace? Alicia Gray and uh, maybe Brianna Kelsey Jones. Mitchell? No, it has oh, to be a big for a big and a guard for a big. Oh, I see. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe Brianna Jones. That's Dude, you know I love Brianna I agree. Jones. I, I agree that Gray, her season started off slow. No. Yeah. So, I think Dijon should have gone. Yeah. That was a bummer. I was looking at the list. I was trying to find her name. <laughs> I was like... No, okay. her and I will still stand ten toes down for Candy Carter. Okay, and she went off the same thing that happened yeah. with Dijon A. Candy Carter went off right after this list came out. And I, I feel like with like, Carter, the only yeah. reason is because it's kind of been a little bit more ebb and flow versus like consistently. Yeah, um, I think that would be the only reason. Is like yeah. one game mm-hmm. she's popping off, and the next game she's effective but not popping off. Uh-huh. I just feel like uh, she because she wasn't starting, she was coming off the bench, so maybe yeah. that had to do with it. But now, ooh, she's doing well. But I think those those three names were all on my list of like, oh yeah, they got they got snubbed in my opinion. But like you said, it's hard to take off people. But for sure, Alicia Gray for me wouldn't be on there. Dijonay, that's the snub of the year right there. What the heck? Yeah. Tell me why I was looking at it and I was yeah. like, wow, no Aces players. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're all on the Olympic team. <laughs> they're all on the Olympic team. So, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's a good list. For for the remainder of it, that's good. All those players are really deserving of it. I'm not surprised. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Early prediction, who do you think is going to win the All-Star game? I think the All-Stars. I think it's going to be close, but I think the All-Stars are going to um... – win because i think usa has to take it easy they can't get injured yeah. it's yeah. just a warm-up game for them yeah. so yeah. i think, I think they'll agree. make it entertaining and make it semi-competitive but fun you know what i mean yeah i think i'll have well, to agree with you on that i do too and if you watch like i mean even the nba the all-star games are like not fun it's because like yeah. nobody can get hurt in an all-star game like yep. imagine if like they actually went hard it'd be game of the year every single yeah. season but uh-huh. You can't afford to get hurt no. from an All Star game. This exactly. should be like end of the year, maybe even post exactly. whatever, like where it's fun and they have some time to rest. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I agree. It's like every it's like that in every sport though, like the Pro Bowl for football. That mm-hmm. was 
horrible. They had to switch it to freaking flag football. So, you know, they should come up with an alternative because, I mean, they're just out there having fun. At least with football, though, it's the weekend before Super Bowl. So it's like, yeah, people yeah. who are done, I don't know why they're taking it as easy, but like yeah. WNBA, MLB, NBA, it's all in the middle of the year, yeah, which is yeah. really hard to even do half of these, like who deserves to be an all-star? Because like you guys yeah. said, at least the gray started yeah. low. So it's like, Give them another month or two. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's only a couple weeks of performance that yeah. we all have to judge them by, right? Or even before playoffs. Who knows? Yeah. There we go. Um, and last question. Who do you think is going to be the all-star MVP? Oh. I can see Dierica. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. I would lean towards Arike again. I think um. she's going to get it. She she goes hard every freaking all star. Yeah. She will go hard. Okay, um, I can see her getting it. That's a good one. Dierk is good though. I like that one. Either one would be good. It'd be cool to see Rika get it because she took herself out of the Olympic roster. So yeah. like that kind of like exactly a nice, like, like a little revenge. Like yeah. this is what she missed out on. Ooh, yeah, that'd be a good one. All right, another banger. Mid season awards and came yes. out with their own. I didn't totally agree with them, but I get what they're saying because you have to take in consideration okay, what's happened right now. Um, but it's the same. We do our preseason, mid season, and our final awards, and we're we're already at the mid the middle of the freaking season, which is insane. Uh, so we'll be going over player of the year, defensive player of the year, rookie of the year, most improved player, six player, uh, coach of the year, and champion. All righty, guys. Uh, I feel like we're going to agree on most of these. <coughs> there might yeah. be one where we're kind of like, eh, that could be a toss-up. Um, player of the year, I feel like, for me, was hard. Because you guys already know. You guys already know it's hard for me. Um, so I won't go because I feel like everyone knows my stance. But is it any different from the preseason? I believe we all did say Asia Wilson, our preseason no, player. No different for me. No different. Same with you? Okay. That's um, don't like the only reason I can see them like on some of these not going with them is because the Aces are having a rough little year. Yeah, exactly. That's the only reason. And I hate that's my least favorite thing about awards is like if you're not the champion, you don't get any of yep. these awards. And it's like to me, that's so untrue. But yep. I agree. Uh, it's concerning. I can see them at the end. If the Aces aren't like a top two, top three team, they're gonna be like, Nope, you don't get it, Asia. Um, I really do think right now Asia is the best player in the WNBA. But man, I know Nafisa, we'll talk about later, got injured. Um, but if she keeps them a top three team yeah. and it keeps doing what she's doing, she's right there with Asia. It's, it would right now it's between those two, but I oh, think yeah. Asia's at the edge. Yeah, I agree. Asia's having a great season as well. So no, no controversy there. I'm gonna stick with Asia. I'll let you guys know on our final predictions. That's when I'll really get down to it. Uh defensive player of the year. I'm also torn here. Um, I saw ESPN's uh, ranking, and they were saying, I think, okay, politically, if Asia gets player of the year, I think they'll give defensive player of the year to Nafisa, just to be like, here you go. Vice versa, I think, if that happens, too. If they pull a fast one and they're like, all right, Nafisa, you got player of the year, they're going to give Asia defensive player of the year. Everything's slick and sly, I swear, with these awards. Um, But for my, I have a top three. And you guys can look at the stats. I put the stats up there because I had a hard time deciding. Because, like you said, Brooke, the Aces are not having a good season so far. They're not really doing good defensively, but Asia's obviously a great defender. So, Minnesota and Seattle are up there in the top, you know, defensive ratings. So, that's why I have, it's between, for me, Asia, Nafisa Collier, and Ezzy. Because Minnesota's defense is tight. Like, we have to give them that. And also Seattle. Seattle has a pretty good defensive rating as well. So is there any other names you guys are considering? Or that's like a pretty like accurate like, okay. Because I'm pretty sure we all said Asia in the preseason. Um, But would you lean one way or the other? For any three of these anyways. I mean, yeah. Asia and Nafisa again are higher than Ezzy for me. Oh, okay. I yeah, I think yeah. Izzy would be like the third choice. I don't know. I just, yeah, if the Aces aren't the champions or on top, they're not giving both awards to Asia. Yeah, I don't think they are either. Like 100% deserves both of them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, she even, like, you could tell she's been working on her free throw jump shot. Like, come mm-hmm. on. Like, there's huh? just, I, we see you. But 
I think Nafisa is a good choice too. Like Nafisa's had a hell yeah. of a year and yeah. Minnesota is having a hell of a year. So I wouldn't be shocked if they gave it to her, to be honest, but I agree with you. I mean, their stats, we'll see. their stats and steals blocks and rebounds is freaking high. That's close. ridiculous. <laughs> and it's super close to each other. Like it's insane. I think right now I still stick with Asia and Nafisa is literally, again, Nafisa is right next to Asia, just neck and neck. But I do think we're right with whoever wins player of the year, the other one's winning defense player of the year. Like, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be vice versa, I think. But Nafisa's not getting player of the year, though. Like, it's if just they, so disappointing. Let's she's say, amazing. hypothetically, it's between these three. Like, Asia's getting player of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I just Nafisa's think not getting player of the year. It, I will be... I'll never speak on this podcast again at this point. Like she's, doing, <laughs> she's doing good, but I don't think she's player of the year good yet. But the thing is, what you said about how the Aces aren't doing so well, I, and that's a concern. I feel like yeah, that's a is. concern for a lot of voters. If a voter literally voted her fourth, and they were literally one of the best teams in the league last year, like that's more concerning this year, even though she's doing better this year for me. Like She's yeah. doing a lot better. So that's the only concern. But she does or, deserve Or they Asia can make up it. for last year. <laughs> exactly. Unanimous. So it should be unanimous. W, yeah. NBA. No, I'm just saying. Um, okay, so we're still sticking with Asia, Defensive Player of the yeah. Year, or Brooke, you're leaning towards Nafisa. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if Nafisa gets it, but I think Asia should okay. get it. Welcome to our bias podcast. Okay, uh, going... No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Not biased. This happens I three years in a row. She was on freaking Phoenix, dude. Like, she's just yeah. so good. <laughs> Uh, okay, Rookie of the Year, the most controversial of them all. Uh, me and Meg have been talking about this. Brooke, do you want? Do you have an opening statement? I saw you. Uh, me, an you really wanted to jump Rookie of the Year. Oh, yeah. thank you for allowing me this honor. Yeah, um, you're welcome. no idea is my opening statement, dude. Good it's point. back and forth between these two. Like the yeah. stat lines, they're getting better and better. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm trying to, like, not also let social media influence every... Exactly. Like, yes, it's, it's so annoying. It's, it's so hard. annoying. But yes. It's... Ah. You, you, like, they both didn't... Both teams didn't start out, like, the best. Maybe Chicago had an upper hand. Yeah. Reese has done a fabulous job on there. Then mm-hmm. you have Caitlin and, like, Aaliyah Boston, who, mm-hmm. like, helped rise the fever mm-hmm. tremendously. And a couple others as well. But it's, yeah. like... it. But they're two different positions, exactly. too. Exactly. So like, it yes. bothers me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I don't know. It's hard. I'm. I don't know who's going to get this one. I don't want to even guess. I think they both are worst case scenario, but and best case scenario at the same time is they make them co rookies of the year. Yeah, I know. Which I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Um, it'll be yeah. worse. Let me explain myself. Even though they're going to clip that and destroy us, but. <laughs> It'll be worse because it's like people aren't going to see the social media rival play out mm-hmm. to how people want it to be. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be great because it's like they are pretty good. They're both doing really great well. seasons. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think we have the sim- a similar stance. I feel like one day Reese is breaking a record. Next day Clark's yeah. breaking a record. They're just going back and forth. And if they keep this up the entire season, how can you say one is doing better than the other? They play different positions. They're both succeeding in their positions. I mean, the the hate both of them get is just so it's crazy. Brutal. It's brutal. Brutal. I don't know how they deal with it. I hope the best for them. But I can see them going co. I know people are like, you better not make this a co player of the, or you know rookie of the year. But it's also like, how can you choose one? Like, okay, right now we're talking about midseason. I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. One of them can fall off. We don't know. But midseason right now, how could you pick one or the other? Like, there, it's just, I don't think it's possible. Um, I'm sure we're going to get so much hate for that. I'm so oh, yeah. sorry. Um, if you, it, but it's like, you have to be, uh, you have to just see both sides. They're both doing good. Give them the credit, give them their flowers. Huh. I think they go co. And they I, both need things to work on. Like, we're not yeah, down I mean, here. To honestly, politics speaking into it, I see them yeah. giving it to Clark. I know. Mainly because of just, like, the Caitlin Clark effect is what they're calling yeah. it. Like, it's real. Like, yeah. Chicago, I'm sorry, but Chicago's not going to every venue and having to get to a bigger venue because they're selling mm-hmm. it. Like, that's Indiana Fever doing that. Yeah. And, more specifically, Caitlin Clark's really helped that. Nobody was going to an Indiana Fever game last yeah. year. Come on. 
Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think like politically wise, they'll waver that into it, which is really unfortunate. And yeah, unfair, that's unfortunate. Yeah. I would, I wouldn't mind if they were code, to be honest. Yeah. What do you think, Meg? Yeah. I say, <clears throat> I say code, but I think there's some factors that could separate them. Mm-hmm. Like if Bieber get knocked out of playoffs for any reason. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And like you guys said, the, the, they play different roles, mm-hmm. but you know, Clark is taking threes and harder, like, mm-hmm. you know, farther sure. away from the basket. And so she's yep. less efficient. And she also has a lot of turnovers and they can make the mm-hmm. case that Reese is mm-hmm. more efficient, but Reese also only takes inside shots. You know, I don't know. There's just so many ways to look at it, but yeah, you, you can't take the take away the fact that they're both having amazing rookie seasons. And mm-hmm. so like like you guys are saying, I think they both just need credit for it. And I guess it's an easy way out, but it is it's the cop out. It's the cop out. It is a cop out, but yeah. You, it it also it's a cop out, but it also shows respect that, you know, you're acknowledging that they both had amazing seasons. Yeah, so. exactly. And I know the biggest comment about Angel Reese is, oh, she gets her own rebounds, yada, yada, yada. And that's why she has so many rebounds. But it's like, <laughs> dude. But it's like, dude, a stat. I have like a TikTok in my head when you said that now. So it's just like, maybe, yeah. maybe dude, the, they're so brutal on her. And it's like, dude. It's, social media it's so bad. Is so mean. It's Honestly, so we should all just delete like TikTok at this point. It's yeah, so bad. they're so vicious, and it's like, oh my god, give her a break, jeez. Yeah. But anyways, we're all a green co. I mean, that's our cop out. Sorry, they're both having great seasons at this point. You can't choose one, but I know people have chosen the one on both sides. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Okay, most improved player. Now I know. I think we said. I said Dana Evans. Unfortunate for Dana. Sorry, Dana. But I'm pretty oh, sure. Biggest, I'm telling you, biggest heartbreak, Dana Evans. If that was a freaking for real. Over, Dana Evans, you're getting that. Sorry, sister. We oh, wanted you. you yes, girl. I really saw the path for you. But Kennedy Carter came in and stole that. Stole yeah. the rain. And we picked the right team, though. Chicago. We knew something in Chicago was going to happen. Yep. No, but I, I really think the race is between DJ and Kennedy Carter. Um, I don't think I Kennedy Carter. I don't even Carter- remember my picks. I, I think I, I brought up Dijon and I was like, Dijon is going to yes. have a good year. I think we were all like Kenny Carter, DJ, uh, not Kenny Carter, Dana Evans and Dijon. Yeah. We're all kind of going back and forth. Um, but now I think it's between Kennedy Carter and Dijon. Uh, I really think Dijon is going to win this award. Her snub from all star is crazy. I mean, I already said Kenny Carl, uh, Kenny Carter's, um, all star snub too, but I don't know. I think Dijon. I think I have Who to got it last on. year. Jackie. No, it was uh oh my god. Megan, fact check. I know because honestly, is. watching Jackie Young, dude, that girl is beefed up and has done so good. Like she could be considered. She can't win it again. Dang it, she wins it I every know, year. But, like, <laughs> could you imagine? Like, just gets better. Yeah. Um, no, I think for- she got it last year. Did was she- it Clark? It was Alicia Clark. No, she was sixth player. No, she year. was sixth player of the year. Yeah, Clark was sixth player. Um. Uh, uh, yeah, but for me, it's between DJ and Kenny Carter. I think you both lean DJ though. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm yeah. through and through with DJ all the way. Yeah, I've been fan of her. Yeah, exactly. Meg, would you? Who would you pick? Um, it was Satu. Oh duh! Yeah, that one was easy. Satu is um uh, was it? most improved player. Yeah, that was easy. So I, I definitely agree with both of you. DJ yeah. and, and Carter came out. Carter came out of nowhere. Yeah, 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 she's killing it. But before she got hurt, I was really on that Maddie Seagrass. Uh, oh, train. I know, and bro. I thought I she was really yes. making a case for herself. I and agree. If she wouldn't have gotten injured. I would have loved to see how that played out. I agree. She would have fit mm-hmm. in yes. with with this, but I agree. 100%. Obviously, you know, injury cut her time short, so I'd have to lean towards uh, Dijonay. Can we actually, now that we're talking about Dallas a little bit, and we'll, we could get into it later, but mm-hmm. Dallas honestly has some depth. For yeah. the injuries, oh, yeah. like these uh-huh. these rookies and the younger players, the bench oh, players are really like holding down the fort right now. Yeah. And it's good they're getting experience. Yeah. They're going to do down Dallas. The road. <laughs> yeah. Dallas really yeah. Good. Okay. Sixth player of the year. And, you know, I was really, this is the one we struggle with every single year. Um, all they have, the player has to start it in less games than they've come off the bench. That's the basic rubric. Um, 
the the one that threw me off ESPN their midseason awards had Kennedy Carter winning this uh, just because as of right now you know she came off the bench more obviously we would give her that but like she's she's gonna be a starter the rest of the season so she's not gonna be in this category any longer um right now I would say but this same thing with Carter for me it's Jordan Horston but she just became a starter so that's gonna be out the window so my next backup Temi. But then she got hurt. So, like, right now, I'm confused. Mm. Literally, we were just talking about Temi. Now she has a thumb injury out another two games. And I'm just like, I can't. Everyone I pick, I come up with a rebuttal for myself. So, six player of the year is always hard. Those three names were on it for me. But now I've come up with an excuse as to why they won't get it. But as <laughs> of right now, those would be my top. Hmm. Okay. Because you could say the same thing for Ari, but now Ari's a starter. Like everyone I'm thinking about was was coming off the bench, but now they're starters. So by the end of the season, they're not going to be considered a sixth player of the year. So uh-huh. I'm just like, well, who am I supposed to pick? They also had Tiffany Hayes in there, and I said absolutely not. <laughs> you are a <laughs> Tiffany no. Hayes hater. No. Every no. time Tiffany Hayes gets brought up, she no absolutely not. <laughs> She's not winning that award. <laughs> oh, that's so She funny. actually might win that award. Let's be real. Dude, I don't think she's having a terrible year. I think she's, she's up and like- down. One day it's 19, one day it's zero. Like, girl. Okay, day. well, that's how I feel about Kia. But, oh, my God. Same mm. person. Yeah. Well, she's out with the illness today, so. Yeah. No, I honestly, I don't even like guessing at this one because, like you said. It's like- hard. There's just so many injuries, and somebody and then, who is and not running then becomes a starter, and then yeah. they get hurt, they become on the bench. It's just like too. So I don't like voting for this one until we get a lot closer. Yeah, until so at the end when we the, have the stats, like okay, who started the most or who didn't start or whatever. Yeah, even even closer to it where there's yeah. only a handful of games left, and we can kind of decide from there. Yeah, this one's six player of the year. I hate. It's my least favorite one. Mid season, preseason. I agree. Yeah. Megs, do you have any uh, other name suggestions? No, Maybe to keep to, an eye on. Maybe we keep know. an eye on. I'm trying to think. Um... You know who could be an interesting one? Uh, Dorka with Minnesota. Mm. That could be an interesting one. That could be we can keep our eyes on. Not, not out of the running on that one. Yeah, I, I think maybe. That could be a thought. It's just other... like you said, like even Jordan, Timmy, like because Timmy was starting for a while there. Yeah. Uh, but she's um off the, yeah. off the bench now. There's there's people that have little sparks, like Talbot for Sparks has been coming off the bench That's true. uh doing good. Mm-hmm. Um there's yeah, there's a few There's a lot so. of season left. It's a lot yeah. of season left to decide that one. So okay, we're gonna scratch that, chalk that one up. We don't know. Uh we ha- I gave you a list of names as who I would be thinking as of this point. Mm-hmm. But we'll have a more accurate one at the end of the season. Okay, coach of the year. Um, for me, I think this is obvious. It's Cheryl Reeve, Minnesota. We're on the Minnesota train, everyone. Yep. Beep, beep. I know she lost in the Fisa Collier, but what happened? Cheryl still won. Yeah, I know it was against Washington or something, but it's okay. We don't need to talk about that. Um, but I think it's gonna be Cheryl. Uh, I know we said I said Noel. I think she's still in the running. I think, I think she's so still too. in the bubble. They're still doing good. They they yeah. well they turned it around. They didn't they turn start around. Off good. They did not they start, start off start- good. Yeah. Um, I, I would also have to say Stephanie White. You always say Stephanie White. But mm-hmm. And you know why, though? It's because I think that she's a defensive-minded like coach and they're a mm-hmm. defensive-minded team. Yeah. And I don't know. They're just – they play well. They play well together. And yeah. I don't know. Okay. I think so that's your in, pick, I Stephanie White? Be, yeah. I think she should be in the running. Mm. Swaggiest coach, Seattle. Sw- <laughs> who who you aspire to be like seattle oh but my no God. i think that, um um our first one cheryl, uh, cheryl reeve she'll, cheryl. yeah she she deserves it but like i said I like this is another one where it's like if you're not winning you're not coach of the year and yeah. the aces won last year they just hate becky so no <laughs> becky's never we said be- we said what two years ago <laughs> becky will never win it becky, again after yeah, that first they season can win it's four a wrap in a row and she's done it's she's a wrap again, never yeah. gonna win it again <laughs> Um, okay, and last one, uh, champion, champion. Uh, I don't know if it's I not Vegas. Know. The only other team I want is Minnesota. It's Minnesota, I agree. Let's just do that because my biases will always root for Las Vegas. I don't think anyone can beat a healthy on beat 
Las Vegas Ace team. Mm-mm. Not in playoffs. Never. Um, but Minnesota, you are close. I also am biased towards Minnesota. Megan, bring it in with your opinion. Here we go. I see the smart Phoenix, Seattle. <laughs> no, it's not Phoenix. <laughs> it's not gonna be Phoenix. No. I think if it's not Vegas, it's Minnesota or Connecticut. No, yeah, you Connecticut, Connecticut. Connecticut might Megan says it. Connecticut every single year. I think I'm roll I the think tape. No, low key a Connecticut fan a little bit. Low key, it's high key. We know. <laughs> It's always something positive towards Connecticut. All right. I know. Megan's like, I don't hate any teams. But, Megan, we know your top three teams. Phoenix, Seattle, Connecticut. <laughs> for now. For now. When that Bay Area team comes. Oh, yeah. Then it's going to be then, all Then you them. guys will know for sure who my team is. All right. Okay. Let's get into the week eight recap. Uh, updates. Lots of injuries. Holy smoke. Cheyenne Parker out with a foot. Arrow Powers out with calf. Jordan Kanda broke her finger. After she just got back, Ryan Howard out with her ankle. Temi out with a thumb now. Kia Stokes out with an illness. Nafisa Collier out with plantar fasciitis. Fingers crossed it wasn't bad, so she's been dealing with it. Diana Taurasi. Megan, lower leg injury. Shout out anybody who has DT on their fantasy team. Oh, man. Brittany Griner. But she's resting for Olympics. I I, I think so. As her manager, I think she's I agree. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Brittany Griner day to day personal. Rebecca Allen day to day with her back, and Emily Angster was out with an illness. All right, some transactions. We get a lot. Jalen Sherrod. You see that? Do you see that? Bro? Nice. I did not Seven see day that. Contract with New York. Tough team um, to get onto though. For real. Destiny Henderson yeah. signed a seven day contract with Atlanta. Nice. Keanu Williams signed. I like a that. Seven- Which one? Destiny uh, Henderson. I know. I like that. I'm glad both of them got on a team. I know seven mm-hmm. days, but we can still. It can roll over. We can still mm-hmm. sign again. Keanu Williams signs a seven-day contract with Seattle. Liz Dixon signs a seven-day contract with Phoenix. Jakia Brown-Turner signs a seven-day contract with Washington. And Crystal Dangerfield signs a seven-day contract with L.A. Wow, that was a lot. All right. Record-breaker performances. Angel Reese, 12 consecutive double-doubles ties Candace Parker for most consecutive double-doubles in league history with 12. Dang, Candace. No, I'm just saying. Uh-huh. Candace is in every freaking record, man. Uh, Caitlin Clark recorded her first career triple double, first rookie in WNBA history to record a triple double. And I believe they said she's the youngest player to record a triple double. Correct? Yeah, I'm because wrong. Sabrina was like 23 and Caitlin Clark's only 22 or something. something like yeah, something like that. By like a couple hundred days or something. Yeah. She'd be like- Exactly. Uh, Tina Charles passes Tamika Catchings for third in all-time WMA scoring, and no one's talking about it. That's a freaking crazy wow. stat, Tina. I, I I voted for you for all-star, Tina. Just just know. Oh. I'm just saying. Kendi Carter is currently the only WNBA player averaging 15-plus points while playing less than 25 minutes. That's Damn. crazy. Uh, Kelsey Plum is the fifth player in WNBA regular season history to have 25-plus points and 6-plus three points made in consecutive games. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, Asia Wilson recorded a 35 points, 12 rebounds, and 6 blocks. Only two other players have done this. Lisa Leslie and Candace Parker. Good job, Asia. Ace has made history with 20,366 people in attendance to their July 2nd game versus Indiana. Highest Can I comment season- on this one? Yeah. So I was watching this game. It was actually right. televised. Uh-huh. And you know, I mean, we've been there, right? So this is how we learn when the yeah. when they go up to shoot their free throws, yeah. and the MC he says shooting two shots. Yeah. When they move to T-Mobile and there's twenty thousand people in there, I expected to hear the mimic of that. Yeah. On TV in my in on my parents' couch. Yeah. It was so dull and bland. Listen, when you go to an Aces game, it's loud. You're especially rooting for the Aces. You yeah. got to yell back. It's loud. It's got to be. That's how you know so, there's more new fans there than. Very disappointed in those 20,000 yes. people. I did hear those those original uh, season ticket members of the Aces. Shout out y'all. But yeah. Little just, corner. Corner yeah, speaker. Like yeah. two All shots. Of, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must well, have been on, on that, the same side as them. <laughs> well, on that same note, um, mm. we went to the LA game. Girl, we don't get to that. 
All right, all right, I'll wait. Hold I'll on. Wait. I'll wait. I'll He's wait. excited. I'll wait. I know. We're not even at the recap yet. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, so that was the highest regular season single game attendance since W. Uh, no, since 1999. And then lastly, there's been 40 games in WNBA regular season uh, this year with 10,000 plus in attendance. Already the most since 2017. Uh, and they only had 43. Over the full season. All right, so let's go into the week eight recap. Megan, I know you're jumping to talk about them, LA, the LA game, but hold on, we're not there yet. Uh, let's talk about Liberty defeating the Lynx 76 67. We had John Cole Jones leading Liberty 21 points, 12 rebounds, four assists. Brown Stewart 17 points, seven, 17 rebounds, Jesus Christ, and three assists. And Nafisa Collier 17 points, 10 rebounds, six assists. The Lynx. Just went scoreless at the end of this game. I don't know if you two watched it. I watched it. The Lynx just let it slip out of their hand. Didn't know how to make a basket. And it was a wrap. Liberty just said, we're just going to win this one. But I kind of, this, this game was close. The Commissioner Cup was kind of the same way. The Lynx rallied at the end to win. But this time they couldn't rally. I still love you, Lynx. Megan, did you end up watching <laughs> this game actually with me? I don't, uh, I don't think so. Okay. I, was I alone? Brooke, did I think you watch you this one? I think I was. Yeah, you were alone. Um, actually, though, since I was at my parents, uh -huh. I realized I have NBA TV because they oh, have direct. That's a so good I'm one. I'm gonna figure out how to stream that one from Heck here. Yeah, that would have been helpful to know at the start of the year. So there you go. <laughs> Stay tuned. And I'll be able to watch more. <laughs> uh, Sun defeat links. Dang, back to back. I did remember that they did lose back to back. Seventy eight to seventy three. Dewana Bonner twenty four points, nine rebounds. DJ A. Carrington seventeen points, six rebounds, and then uh, links were led by Alana Smith fourteen points, four rebounds, two assists. Um, they lost Nafisa in this game, and no one on the links decided to score. See, so we already know how that's going to end. Also, Dewana Bonner twenty four points. When when Bonner's on, they're going to win the game. Uh huh. I mean. But when she's when when Bonner's off, they're gonna lose that game. Um, but yeah, Nafisa plantar fasciitis. I know we went over it. I thought some people were saying it was a knee, it was an ankle, but plantar. Anyone had plantar fasciitis here? I heard it's really painful. Well, okay. I thought I know of. If anyone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I> never know. <laughs> Look no, at I lot. heard it's hecka painful. Uh, but apparently she's been dealing with it her whole career. So fingers crossed. I think she might. You think they sit her out until Olympics? Well, that would be brutal for me. But I think they might sit Probably, her out. It's less than a month away. Like we're we're like. Oh my god! Isn't that crazy? The end of the yeah. month. So probably. Yeah, it's insane. Uh, I I I agree. I think they're going to sit her out. Um, Megan, here we are. We're at the Sparks. Defeating the Aces, ninety-eight to ninety-three. Megan, take it away. Let us Listen, know. Guys, Let us know. Let me tell y'all about this arena. Oh my God, this arena was lit. What <laughs> arena? What arena? Sparks home arena. Come on, Sparks were home, guys. They faced the Aces. It went to it went to overtime. But let me tell you, from start oh, yeah. to finish, first off, this arena was packed. It was I, packed. I got a check. It, it, it might have been sold out because it was packed. And then they had the music bumping, like, yeah. from hip off to the end of the game, Brooke. Like, oh, I love that. Like, it was, it was no, a good no break. experience. It was, like, bumping. Yeah. The That's DJ, how the, the comic Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was good. And it was so crazy because it was, like, you know, you have your Sparks fans. But the game was so good that uh, the Sparks fans were cheering for the Aces when they did so good. Like, so when Jackie hit, like, those back-to-back -back threes that kind of changed the momentum at the end, the arena was erupting. And I, yeah. I for a minute, thought, oh, shoot, we're in, <laughs> we're in Vegas. Yeah. But it, it was L.A. I was, just, I was just amazed by how, like, pumped up the uh, Sparks arena was. And there were a lot of, a lot of fans that um, – travel from the aces like we recognize that group of fans that come and they bring the cards and oh yeah i know what you're talking about yeah. aces and stuff it's yeah. a big group of them i think yeah. they travel to any game too. that they're able to get to um and yeah i mean they were battling back and forth with the uh you know the commentator person mm -hmm. you know uh trying to scream the aces chant the whole game yeah it <laughs> and was then loud. the dj was cutting them off and then playing these like bangers yeah. like it, it was good though it yeah. was a fun time.
No, he and I think overall. this is why women's basketball is so fun. One, there's music the whole time, you guys. Like, when yeah. we say, like, start to finish, like, that is mm-hmm. no joke. It becomes, like, a background noise, and they're talking yeah. over the music. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I love to know that L.A. is like that, because that makes me even more excited about Golden State, and hopefully they do that. Yeah. But um, that's the fun thing about WNBA is, like, yes, there's rivalries, right? Like, mm-hmm. L- or Vegas and New York are becoming a big one, and, mm-hmm. you know. But, like, nobody's booing and no. trying, yeah. like, from the stands. Everybody's mm-hmm. like, loves basketball. And yeah. That's so much more fun. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It was a good experience. We were, yeah, we uh, were saying how many kids, like, even little boys that were yeah. rocking rocking women jerseys. Yeah, and that was, like, cool. so amazing to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not just L.A. or Vegas. They had, like, random mm-hmm. jerseys random on. Jersey, so yeah. I'm just like, wow, okay. Like, they're actually, like, finding players, liking them, buying their jerseys. So that was pretty cool. I agree. Crypto must go. You must go. to Was yeah. there crypto. um Hawkeye fans there? Yeah. Yellow, was there? Dude, they were yeah. everywhere. <laughs> no, yeah. it was more Kaylin Clark. Like, Indiana well, Kaylin, jerseys. I, well, yeah. Not Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. It was more like, like fever jerseys. Yeah, the fever yeah, jerseys. More yeah, more fever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those red fever jerseys are pretty dope. I do like the red. I do like I don't even like red like that either. Mm-hmm. Okay, but back to the game. So they defeated the Aces 98 to 93. Dierre Kahambi, 28 points, 14 rebounds, 4 assists. Ari McDonald went off. Dude, yeah. in person, Brooke, she looks like a, she's just. She's, she's fast. so fast. God, I was just watching her cook us. I said, oh, my God. Uh, 23 <laughs> points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists. And Asia Wilson led Aces 35 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists. So many things went wrong. The Aces had so many chances to close that game, and they didn't. Especially that well, last that last shot by Kelsey Plum got a little stiff. Well, Jackie uh, Jackie ended up getting hurt right at the end of the uh, second quarter. Yeah. Um, it looked like it was her hand or wrist, yeah. and she went off, and then it was halftime. Mm-hmm. And when she came back out in the third, I mean, yeah. she went back out there, but sh- the third, she really she wasn't just wasn't much. there in the third. And I, I think that affected them, too. So I agree. I agree. But, hey, uh, Sp- Dierica always goes off against us. Um, I'm not surprised. Uh, the Sparks are kind of our kryptonite a little bit. Would you guys mm-hmm. say? I think they are. Uh, but overall, good game. Like Aces came back from what, like a fifteen plus point deficit, and because yeah. I, I looked at the score one time, I said, "Are we really losing this bad?" And then all of a sudden it was tied. I said, "Oh, here we go." Um, <laughs> but yeah, if you haven't been to crypto, go to crypto. It was nice. Uh, Wings defeat Dream eighty two to eighty five. Um, Arike nineteen points, five rebounds, four assists. Tierra McCowan sixteen points, eleven rebounds, four assists. And Alicia Gray led the Dream nineteen points, seven rebounds. Eight assists. I really think if the wings can hold on just a little longer and they get Sachi back, I really think they could they might make a push. What do you guys think about Dallas? Like they do you think- need to make a push because they're becoming quite a disappointment for me this year. Yeah, but they're injuries. I feel bad for them. Oh. After Olympic break, they get everyone back. I think if they can win a couple games, squeak them out, stay there, I think they can push. Oh. They can make a well, push. Well, yeah, I know. And their bench has done a really good job holding it together, like I said mm-hmm. earlier. Mm-hmm. But it's just, yeah, it's, it's sad to see them like, I know second to last. it's hurting me. It's hurting my heart, honestly. <laughs> um, this one, I wish we would have saw sky in Seattle, but this was at the same time we was were this at... going on like Wednesday. No, this is the Friday no, this... game. Yeah. It's Friday. So yeah, this is when this is what was on the same time as the aces and sparks game that we were at. So we didn't get to watch this game, but I heard it was crazy. I heard angel Reese went off and Kenny Carter. So Sky defeats Seattle 88 to 84. Kennedy Carter, 33 points, four rebounds, three assists. Angel Reese, 27 points, 10 rebounds, two assists. And Jordan Horston led Seattle 20 points, six rebounds. Man, I really wish I would have watched this game. I want to know what went wrong. Uh, if you guys seen it, uh, let us know what went wrong in the comments for Seattle. But the big three lose Aces, Seattle, Liberty all on the same weekend. Which and Minnesota, but Minnesota at least lost to the Sun. So, um, like I said, Fever defeats Liberty 83 78. Caitlin Clark gets first triple double by a rookie. Uh, she led Indiana with 19 points, 12 rebounds, 13 assists. That's insane. Uh, Aaliyah Boston 18 points, eight rebounds, two assists. And then Sabrina led Liberty 22 points, three rebounds, four assists. 
these little fevers in the sky. This is crazy. I can't believe it. Little fever. They both got good upsets this week in LA. Yeah. Like all three of them losing, that's kind of insane. Um, but man, the fever are gelling. Who keeps saying that? I think Brooke, you keep saying that. Yeah. Every I'm game. telling you, I've been a fever fan for like three years, two, three years though. Yeah. They're they're looking good. I can we can say the same for the little duo in Chicago though. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to three o'clock. But we knew that, that was gonna happen. Yeah. Maybe we'll I've say? been uh, Sky and Seattle have a rematch today at three. Oh, oh, that's what you said. Ooh. Let's uh, see. We'll, we'll watch that one. Uh, we I are recording it? a little early. Let's yeah. see. Fact check it. It is, I think. I know we're recording a little early, so we're missing the Chicago, Seattle, and Phoenix versus LA. Um, so if you didn't see that on our big wins list, we don't know. I don't know. I, I, I can't wait. I need to see that Chicago, Seattle game. I need to see what I missed out on. Um, is it even televised? I don't even think it's televised. No it's way. It's going to be on the app. Okay. It'll be on yeah. the app. But anyways, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Let us know all your opinions down below. We talked about our all-star reactions, our mid-season awards, and our week eight recap. A lot of things. A lot of things. Okay. Olympics are coming up. Our Olympic coverage. That's going to be fun. I can't wait to watch the Olympics. That's going to be super fun. Uh, no, but yeah. So excited. I'm Yes, yeah. I'm here. Uh, but thank you guys for tuning in hit that subscribe button if you're new like comment share and we'll be back next week with the week nine recap peace bye y'all